What's up everybody? How you doing today? And welcome to a brand new video. Today we're having my three round NFL mock draft and for those of you who don't know, the event will be held from April 29th to May 1st. This year's class is loaded with talent, being top heavy at quarterback and having great depth at both wide receiver and edge rusher positions. As I'm gonna be talking about a grand total of 96 players, I'll be making a brief analysis about each and every prospect for this video not to be very long and exhaustive. I would like to emphasize as well that the draft is not an exact science and that the selections made by the teams will depend mostly on their needs and will have an impact on what they do in subsequent rounds. We also won't be having trades in this simulation once they are very tough to predict. If you like the content, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and, in case you have something to point out, feel free to comment down below. Without further ado, let's now hop into it. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback from Clemson. The most NFL-ready quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck, Sunshine will be the face of the Jaguars franchise for years to come and, if surrounded by great talent, he could elevate them to the next level due to his game-managing skills and very few weaknesses. With the second pick, the New York Jets select Zach Wilson, quarterback from BYU. After trading away Sam Darnold to the Panthers, it's almost certain that the Jets will be taking a quarterback with this pick. Despite the fact that the level of competitiveness he's faced at BYU was questionable, Wilson showed an eye-popping arm strength that will most certainly be used greatly by Robert Saleh and Mike LaFleur. With the third pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Justin Fields, quarterback from Ohio State. It's been rumored that the Niners traded up to select Mac Jones at 3, but I still have him taking Justin Fields, who has a way higher ceiling and would benefit well from Kyle Shanahan's quarterback-friendly offensive scheme, especially if he spends a year developing under Jimmy Garoppolo. With the fourth pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Kyle Pitts, tight end from Florida. This seems like a trade-down spot for a quarterback-needy team, and tight end is definitely not one of the biggest needs for the Falcons. But Pitts is a unicorn type of player who could bring some versatility to Arthur Smith's new offense. With the fifth pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Panay Sewell, offensive tackle from Oregon. We would all love to see Jamar Chase reuniting with Joe Burrow, but right now, the Bengals' biggest concern has to be Burrow's health. After not investing at the position via free agency, Cincinnati hopes that Sewell, who seems like a generational talent at left tackle, can bear some kind of resemblance to Anthony Munoz and take this unit to the next level. With the sixth pick, the Miami Dolphins select Jamar Chase, wide receiver from LSU. Despite opting out of the 2020 college season, Chase kept his status as the number one receiver in the class and will provide a much-needed help to Tua Tango-Vailoa as his main passing option. With the seventh pick, the Detroit Lions select Jalen Waddle, wide receiver from Alabama. After losing Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones in this year's offseason, the Lions give their new quarterback Jared Goff a weapon in Waddle, who's basically as good as a receiver prospect as you can get. With the eighth pick, the Carolina Panthers select Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle from Northwestern. Seemingly out of the quarterback market, the Panthers look for an upgrade over Cam Irvin with Slater, who showed great composure and is considered by many experts as the most NFL-ready left tackle in the class. With the ninth pick, the Denver Broncos select Trey Lance, quarterback from North Dakota State. The Broncos are a quarterback away from being a playoff contender in the AFC, so they decide to take on Lance's intriguing upside as a raw prospect and move on from a disappointing Drew Locke. With the 10th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Patrick Sertan, cornerback from Alabama. After losing both Byron Jones and Chidobi Awuzie to free agency in the last two off-seasons, the Cowboys reunite Sertan with Trevon Diggs to form an up-and-coming cornerback duo. With the 11th pick, the New York Giants select Devontae Smith, wide receiver from Alabama. The Giants are not satisfied with Kenny Galladay signing and take the Heisman Trophy winner in Devontae Smith who despite being way too small at 170 pounds, is one of the best skilled players in the draft. With the 12th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Micah Parsons, linebacker from Penn State. The Eagles have way too many glaring needs to be taken into consideration, so they address their linebacker unit with Parsons, an outstanding athlete who could be an all-pro caliber player if developed properly. With the 13th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Christian Derrissaw, offensive tackle from Virginia Tech. Justin Herbert's record-breaking rookie season could have been even better if he had a good offensive line ahead of him, 
so they take a rock-solid player in Derisaw to be his blindside protector. With the 14th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive guard from USC. The best interior offensive lineman in the class, Vera Tucker can plug in immediately for the Vikings as a guard with the potential to play at left tackle as well. With the 15th pick, the New England Patriots select Mac Jones, quarterback from Alabama. The Cam Newton experiment failed in Foxborough, and Mac Jones could very well be a reliable starter at the next level, even though I don't see him becoming a top-notch quarterback one day. With the 16th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select J.C. Horn, cornerback from South Carolina. If Arizona really wants to compete in the NFC West, the most competitive division in football right now, they 100% need to improve at cornerback. In this case, they take J.C. Horn to be Patrick Peterson's successor, whose 40-yard dash was simply jaw-dropping. With the 17th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders select Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle from Michigan. After trading away Trent Brown to the Patriots, the Raiders take their new right tackle in Jalen Mayfield, a very refined prospect who would serve as a cornerstone to their offensive line full rebuild. With the 18th pick, the Miami Dolphins select Jeremiah owusu koromoa linebacker from Notre Dame. JOK is an explosive prospect at linebacker who also has the flexibility to play safety at the next level, being able to immediately impact the Dolphins' defense at both positions. With the 19th pick, the Washington football team select Caleb Farley, cornerback from Virginia Tech. Even though they already have one of the scariest defensive units in the league, Washington pull the trigger and take Farley, who's arguably the best cornerback prospect in the class and whose stock has fallen recently due to a back surgery. With the 20th pick, the Chicago Bears select Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle from Oklahoma State. Chicago's offensive line is mediocre at best, so Tevin Jenkins could be an interesting solution who would be a perfect fit for their power run offense. With the 21st pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle from Texas. With Anthony Costanzo's retirement, the Colts have a glaring hole at left tackle, so taking Cosme here, who's one of the most athletic offensive tackles in the class, would be a nice solution. With the 22nd pick, the Tennessee Titans select Greg Newsom, cornerback from Northwestern. Newsom will be an instant starter if selected here by the Titans, especially considering that their secondary got even worse from last year with the departures of Ettore Jackson and Desmond King. With the 23rd pick, the New York Jets select Quiddy Pay, defensive end from Michigan. Pay, an athletic pass rusher who could provide a ton of help to the Jets' lackluster front seven, is surprisingly the first edge off the board, considering that this class isn't top heavy but very deep at the position. With the 24th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Najee Harris, running back from Alabama. I'm totally opposed to taking a running back in the first round if you have other needs that could be addressed, but Najee Harris fits perfectly the Steelers' inside run scheme and should bring some spark to an offense that was very one-dimensional in 2020. With the 25th pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trayvon Merrick, safety from TCU. Merrick is the best safety in the draft and would bring improvement to a secondary that already has CJ Henderson and the newcomer Shaquille Griffin. With the 26th pick, the Cleveland Browns select Zaven Collins, linebacker from Tulsa. Dynamic is the best word to describe Zaven Collins, who at the same time could be able to provide much needed help at linebacker to the Browns while also being impactful as a pass rusher. With the 27th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver from Minnesota. The Sammy Watkins addition shouldn't erase the Ravens' massive need for a true number one receiver, so Bateman could pretty much fit the bill with his great skills as a route runner. With the 28th pick, the New Orleans Saints like Jalen Phillips, defensive end from Miami. Phillips stood out on a very talented Miami defensive line in 2020 and will be an amazing replacement to Trey Hendrickson as a playmaker against both the run and the pass. With the 29th pick, the Green Bay Packers select Eric Stokes, cornerback from Georgia. The Packers' biggest area for improvement is at CB2, considering that Kevin King isn't suited to be a starter for a contender. Stokes is one of the most instinctive defensive backs in the class and could start immediately at the opposite side of Jair Alexander. With the 30th pick, the Buffalo Bills select Aziz Ojolari, defensive end from Georgia. If the Bills want to be able to constantly challenge Patrick Mahomes in the AFC, they have to upgrade their personnel at the pass rush, so Ojolari, 
who has a high motor and great body control, could provide some help to this lackluster unit. With the 31st pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select Nick Bolton, a linebacker from Missouri. The Chiefs' offense can't always win games by itself, and a way to improve defensively is by upgrading their linebacker unit through the selection of Nick Bolton. With the 32nd pick, the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Levi Onwuzariki, defensive tackle from Washington. Onwuzariki seems like a natural replacement to Ndamukong Su, who despite resigning for another season is already up there in age. So now let's move on to the second round. With the 33rd pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Christian Barmore, defensive tackle from Alabama. The Jaguars need to upgrade the interior of their defensive line, and Barmore is seen by many as the best player at the position in the class. With the 34th pick, the New York Jets select Travis Etienne, running back from Clemson. The Jets have dozens of needs to be addressed, but the fact that Etienne is available on day two is way too tempting to be passed upon. With the 35th pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Gregory Rousseau, defensive end from Miami. Rousseau is an athletic raw talent who still lacks some refinement, but if properly polished, could be a huge difference maker for the Falcons. With the 36th pick, the Miami Dolphins select Javante Williams, running back from UNC. Despite being seen as the third best running back in the class, Williams isn't that much of a downgrade from Harris and Etienne and could make the Dolphins' offense real scary alongside Chase. With the 37th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Terrace Marshall, wide receiver from LSU. After missing on a top 3 receiver, the Eagles addressed their huge need for a pass catcher with Marshall, who seemed to be very reliable last season. With the 38th pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Kadarius Toney, wide receiver from Florida. The fastest receiver in the class, Toney would be lethal if playing with Joe Burrow and could cause some real damage with the ball in his hands at the next level. With the 39th pick, the Carolina Panthers select Aaron Robinson, cornerback from UCF. Despite having found a jam on Jeremy Chin in last year's second round, the Panthers could still use some help at the outside with Aaron Robinson, who played mostly in the slot at UCF, but could make the transition to a boundary corner. With the 40th pick, the Denver Broncos select Jamin Davis, linebacker from Kentucky. The fastest riser in this year's draft process, Jamin Davis would help significantly the Broncos' linebacker unit, which is a downside of an already solid defense. With the 41st pick, the Detroit Lions select Asante Samuel Jr., cornerback from Florida State. The son of former Eagles defensive back Asante Samuel, Samuel Jr. possesses quick feet and, despite being slightly undersized, could play in the opposite side of Jeff Okuda and form a young duo. With the 42nd pick, the New York Giants select Joseph Osai, defensive end from Texas. Big Blue's defense was impressively solid last season, but could benefit well from a natural playmaker like Osai as an outside linebacker on their 3-4 scheme. With the 43rd pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Tyson Campbell, cornerback from Georgia. The 49ers love their tall cornerbacks, so Campbell could plug in and be a natural successor to Richard Sherman. With the 44th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Davion Nixon, defensive tackle from Iowa. Nixon is a splash defender from the interior and would address the Cowboys' need for a defensive lineman. With the 45th pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle from Alabama. When you draft your franchise quarterback, it is very important to protect him, and Leatherwood could do so by playing left tackle or slipping into the inside of their O-line. With the 46th pick, the New England Patriots select Rondell Moore, wide receiver from Purdue. New England spent big-time money in free agency to improve their horrendous receiving core, but they still lack a concrete number one wide receiver who could potentially be Rondell Moore. With the 47th pick, the LA Chargers select Pat Fryermuth, tight end from Penn State. After losing Hunter Henry in free agency, the Chargers need to provide Herbert with more weapons, and Fryermuth could be the solution as a very good target at the tight end spot. With the 48th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders select Jabril Cox, linebacker from LSU. Cox is one of the best pass coverage linebackers in the class, who could provide instant help to the Raiders' defense due to his mobility. With the 49th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Jason Owe, defensive end from Penn State. Selecting a running back or a tight end here would be a reach, so the Cardinals take one of the best players remaining on the board on Jason Owe, who will need some time to develop at the next level. With the 50th pick, 
the Miami Dolphins select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard from Ohio State. The Dolphins could still use some help on their pass protection and run blocking, and Wyatt Davis, one of the best interior offensive linemen in the class, would be a wide selection. With the 51st pick, the Washington football team select Leon Eichenberg, offensive tackle from Notre Dame. After taking Farley, who fell into their laps in the first round, Washington addressed their biggest need at left tackle with Eichenberg. With the 52nd pick, the Chicago Bears select Kelvin Joseph, cornerback from Kentucky. Cornerback became a necessity for the Bears after the controversial cut of pro bowler Kyle Fuller, so Kelvin Joseph could align opposite to Jalen Johnson, who was a pleasant surprise in his rookie campaign. With the 53rd pick, the Tennessee Titans select Elijah Moore, wide receiver from Ole Miss. Corey Davis left in free agency and Elijah Moore could be an astonishing replacement, as he's a very decent route runner with great speed. With the 54th pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Carlos Basham, defensive end from Wake Forest. The Colts already have a solid defensive front, but could benefit from a difference maker at the edge, so Boogie Basham seems like a match made in heaven. With the 55th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Landon Dickerson, center from Alabama. With the retirement of Marquis Pouncey, the Steelers have a big need at center and will be very pleased to get Dickerson, the best player at the position in the class. With the 56th pick, the Seattle Seahawks select Ifiato Milifonwu, cornerback from Syracuse. It's always very difficult to predict who the Seahawks will select, as they are probably reaching for a guy who's projected to go on day 3, but in this case they have a huge need at cornerback and take Milifonwu, who would fit well in their cover 3 zone scheme. With the 57th pick, the Los Angeles Rams select Joe Tryon, defensive end from Washington. The Rams already have Aaron Donald, but could still add some help in the quarterback pressing department with Joe Tryon, who's very explosive off the edge. With the 58th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Richie Grant, safety from UCF. Grant is a ball hawking safety who played a ton of single high defense and would be an amazing fit with the Ravens. With the 59th pick, the Cleveland Browns select Ronnie Perkins, defensive end from Oklahoma. The signing of Jadavion Clowney didn't erase Cleveland's need of getting someone to play opposite of Miles Garrett, so Perkins' unique power and strength off the edge would provide a ton of help. With the 60th pick, the New Orleans Saints select Javon Holland, safety from Oregon. Holland's versatility in the secondary should be very attractive here for the Saints, being able to play both safety or slot corner. With the 61st pick, the Buffalo Bills select Elijah Moden, cornerback from Washington. The best true nickel corner in the class, Elijah Moden is a very instinctive player who would elevate the Bills' cornerback unit. With the 62nd pick, the Green Bay Packers select Creed Humphrey, center from Oklahoma. The Packers had a first-team Oprah center in Corey Lindsley, so his departure in free agency left a glaring need at the position that is solved here by the selection of Creed Humphrey. With the 63rd pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select Dylan Radins, offensive tackle from North Dakota State. All of Kansas City's investments at the offensive line were directed to its inside, so taking the blindside protector of Zach Wilson and Radins to be Eric Fisher's replacement will be an instant dub to the Chiefs. With the 64th pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Amon Ra St. Brown, wide receiver from USC. With Chris Godwin playing under the franchise tag, the Bucks should definitely target a receiver for Tom Brady via the draft, and St. Brown should be an intriguing vertical threat. Let's now move on to the third round. With the 65th pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Brevin Jordan, tight end from Miami. Jacksonville gives Lawrence a big and athletic weapon in Brevin Jordan to complement the receiving trio of DJ Chark, Marvin Jones, and LaVisca Chanel. With the 66th pick, the New York Jets select Paulson Adebo, cornerback from Stanford. Out of all needs the Jets have, cornerback may be their biggest one, so Adebo would be a great addition to a very talent-lacking unit. With the 67th pick, the Houston Texans select Baron Browning, linebacker from Ohio State. The Texans make their first selection in the draft and take Browning, who could be a long-term successor to an aging Whitney Merciless. With the 68th pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Michael Carter, running back from UNC. Todd Gurley is probably not coming back and the Falcons take the agile Carter to complement Mike Davis in the running game. With the 69th pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Cam Sample, defensive end from Tulane. Sample is by far one of the most overlooked players in the class and his keen versatility would make him a solid compensation for losing Shaq Lawson in free agency. 
With the 70th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Sean Wade, cornerback from Ohio State. The Eagles have a huge gap in their secondary and take Sean Wade, whose stock is questionable but could be a great contributor in spread formations. With the 71st pick, the Denver Broncos select Kenneth Gainwell, running back from Memphis. Gainwell will enter the NFL as already one of the best receiving backs and would be an outstanding addition to Denver's running back committee. With the 72nd pick, the Detroit Lions select Jay Tufeli, defensive tackle from USC. The Lions could look for an upgrade on the trenches and Tufeli's athletic archetype would provide a much needed help. With the 73rd pick, the Carolina Panthers select Chess Surratt, linebacker from UNC. Surratt would be a nice addition to a very young and developing defense that could still use some help in the middle of the field. With the 74th pick, the Washington football team select Dwayne Eskridge, wide receiver from Western Michigan. The signing of Curtis Samuel could be enough to help Washington's receiving deficiencies, but Eskridge is a very talented prospect who makes it very difficult to be passed upon at this point in the draft. With the 75th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Jackson Carmen, offensive tackle from Clemson. Trevor Lawrence blindside protector, Carmen could also make a transition to guard at the next level and be a solution to an offensive line that constantly struggles with injuries. With the 76th pick, the New York Giants select Dylan Moses, linebacker from Alabama. A player whose stock fell significantly due to uninspiring performances last season, Moses could aggregate value to the Giants' linebacker unit. With the 77th pick, the LA Chargers select Trill Williams, cornerback from Syracuse. After releasing all-pro caliber corner Casey Hayward, the Chargers have a glaring need at the position and take Williams, one of the most versatile defensive backs in the class. With the 78th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Hamsen Azirodin, safety from Florida State. Anthony Harris left in free agency, making an already weak secondary even weaker, so Azirodin's physical gifts should provide great value to the Vikings. With the 79th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders select Trey Smith, offensive guard from Texas. The Raiders' full offensive line rebuild gets another solid piece in Trey Smith, who would substitute Gabe Jackson pretty well. With the 80th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders select Jamar Johnson, safety from Indiana. With his second selection in a row, Mike Mayock improves at safety by selecting Jamar Johnson, a player that made some massive progress through his time in college. With the 81st pick, the Miami Dolphins select Marvin Wilson, defensive tackle from Florida State. Miami could improve their personnel in the interior of the defensive line by keeping Marvin Wilson in state. With the 82nd pick, the Washington football team select Kyle Trask, quarterback from Florida. Washington did great with a game manager under center in Alex Smith, so Trask projects as a potential low-tier starter who could become great value at such a low cost. With the 83rd pick, the Chicago Bears select Diami Brown, wide receiver from UNC. With uncertainty surrounding Allen Robinson's future with the Bears, Ryan Pace pulls the trigger and takes Diami Brown to upgrade their receiving core as a certain vertical threat. With the 84th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Andre Sisco, safety from Syracuse. The Eagles decide to use both of their third-round picks to bolster their secondary, and Cisco is a legit ball hawk who could become a high-end starter if given a proper development. With the 85th pick, the Tennessee Titans select Ailing McNeil, defensive tackle from NC State. McNeil would be an amazing team fit with the Titans, who desperately need a run-stuffing nose tackle like him. With the 86th pick, the New York Jets select Deontay Brown, offensive guard from Alabama. The Jets found a cornerstone to their offensive line in Mackay Becton in last year's draft, but they still need help inside, especially if they want to improve in the running game department. With the 87th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Rashad Weaver, defensive end from Pittsburgh. Another underrated edge prospect in this year's class, Weaver would provide some help to a front seven that regressed slightly from Bud Dupree's departure. With the 88th pick, the LA Rams select Quinn Miners, center from Wisconsin Whitewater. Miners played Division III football and increased his stock after a huge display at the Senior Bowl, so the Rams take him to be a successor to Austin Bly. With the 89th pick, the Cleveland Browns select Tommy Togiai, defensive tackle from Ohio State. Cleveland needs a replacement to Larry Ogunjobi who left in free agency and take Togiai to provide help in the trenches. With the 90th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Brady Christensen, offensive tackle from BYU. Following Riley Reef's departure, the Vikings take a new left tackle in Christensen, a more experienced prospect who could start right away. 
With the 91st pick, the Cleveland Browns select Israel Mukuamo, cornerback from South Carolina. Despite heavily improving their secondary with the additions of Troy Hill and John Johnson, the Browns take Mukuamo as an option to play opposite to Denzel Ward. With the 92nd pick, the Green Bay Packers select Tylan Wallace, wide receiver from Oklahoma State. We all know that Aaron Rodgers still needs some help at the wide receiver position, and Wallace is a consistent pass catcher who could become a solid number two option alongside Devontae Adams. With the 93rd pick, the Buffalo Bills select Hunter Long, tight end from Boston College. The Bills know that Dawson Knox isn't a long-term solution at tight end and take Long, who showed great production as a number one pass catching option at college. With the 94th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select Nico Collins, wide receiver from Michigan. Looking to keep their offense as sparky as it has been for the last few seasons, the Chiefs could benefit well from a big receiver like Collins to be Sammy Watkins' successor. With the 95th pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Walker Little, offensive tackle from Stanford. The Bucs' offensive line was sometimes inconsistent throughout the regular season, and Little has great size to eventually become Tom Brady's blindside protector. With the 96th pick, the New England Patriots like Pete Werner, linebacker from Ohio State. Werner isn't the flashiest linebacker prospect, but projects as a very solid player at the next level who could start right away for the Patriots. So that's it for today's video, thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed. Comment down below what are your thoughts regarding your favorite team selections and, in case you disagree with it, tell me which player you'd pick instead. Once again, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a thumbs up and if possible subscribe, that would make my day. Until next time folks, peace!